Why are people talking about freeze drying there, bud? I know it seems crazy. It seems like something that you would never do. It's counterproductive, right? You want the nice, slow, good drying cure. But believe it or not, some people are getting some great results. But what is freeze drying in general? So let's discuss that real quick. Freeze drying, also known as lyophilization, is a process that removes water from substances in order to extend the shelf life. The process of freeze drying involves freezing the material, then lowering the pressure and adding heat to allow the frozen water in the material to transform into vapor or sublimate. Now freeze drying occurs in three different phases. Freezing, primary drying, and secondary drying. Now freeze drying is very useful for survival purposes and can be used to preserve a wide range of foods including meats, fruits, vegetables, and even dairy products for up to 25 years. But people are using it to dry and cure their, their flour. I know, sounds crazy, but hear me out. Now freeze drying and curing buds is gaining popularity amongst growers for the ability to produce a surprisingly good end product in a very short time. The method's been used in the food industry for decades and has been applied now to our favorite plant in recent years. By utilizing freeze drying instead of traditional drying, some growers are seeing reduced times of curing and drying to as low as 24 to 36 hours, and this allegedly without any loss in quality, which sounds insane to me. I know, trust me. Again, just hear me out. This process involves quick freezing the buds at temperatures between minus 40 degrees to minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, followed by controlled sublimation and a final drying stage with regulated moisture content. Now there's a fine line with this. You don't want to go too far. Of course, over drying anything is going to make it so the quality is nowhere near as good. And if you're a consumer of the product like myself, well, you want it to be the best flavor and smell and overall effect that it can be. Dang, dang, dang. Dang, dang. Now if you're dealing with something like this process, you're going to have to invest more money than you would in other drying processes, but some have seen a better ROI in general, especially again, those commercial growers. Now according to some reports, here are some benefits. Retention of cannabinoid and terpenes, stabilization of live biomass and cannabinoids for further refinement, and controlled moisture removal and concentrates to prevent oxidation. Enhanced quality and potency without the degradation of terpenes resulting in better fragrance and taste. And some growers have seen an average of 3-4% to increase in total cannabinoids. Another benefit is minimizing oxidation and eliminating the potential of mold and mildew within the flower. Now of course, home growers, we don't deal with this quite as much, but some commercial growers deal with issues that they don't even see, and it definitely comes up when you're dealing with testing. This process can also create a consistent and reliable automated drying and curing process, which for a lot of us, that's awesome. Now Canitrol and other things are definitely going to take care of that for you, but the price point may be a little too high. Freeze drying still is a little bit more expensive, of course, compared to traditional drying, but there is equipment out there that is somewhat affordable. The biggest thing is utilizing something like this will be space efficiency and your time. Of course, you won't have such a large area if you're hang drying and you're utilizing this technique, but then also again, you want it to be drying as long compared to traditional dry room. Now, firsthand, I've seen some flour that's been freeze dried and I really do feel like it was overdone. In other cases, I've seen it where it was done and I didn't even notice until the person told me after the fact. So it can be hit or miss just like anyone else's drying or curing technique. Now some big downsides of this of course are the overall consumption of electricity to be able to use this as well as the initial investment to get something that's going to be able to freeze dry all your product. Now a disadvantage of freeze dried flour is definitely going to be potentially over drying it. I still struggle to find the fact that this can increase the potency or increase the terpenes but I've yet to try it myself. This is done more at a commercial scale and something that I may dabble in in the future. It's not gonna be something that everybody's gonna be able to dive into, but when you think about it, neither are a lot of these other crazy inventions and innovative things that have been coming out as of recent, so it's kinda of hard to see where the evolution of the plant's gonna go at a home grow level without seeing some entry-level equipment that's gonna be more uh, approachable for those of us who are on a budget. Now, is this something that you're currently doing in your garden or know someone, or maybe you're considering doing in your garden? Let me know below in the comment section, and maybe we can spark that conversation. With that being said, it's your boy Rob from CLTV. Stay lifted. Peace. This episode is brought to you by AC Infinity. If you're ready to nurture your green thumb and grow the garden of your dreams, look no further because AC Infinity has got you covered. Whether you're breaking it down to get into individual pieces or you're getting the entire AC Infinity grow kit, AC Infinity brings everything you need to unleash your gardening potential. Use discount code CLTV at checkout to save on all AC Infinity products.